Oh, oh, geez, do I have enough lights back here? I gotta get some more lighting in here. Anyway, how you doing? Can you see me? What's going on? How come the... There we go, that works. Hey, Jen's here. Oh my gosh, Diana's here. Jen's here too. Jen, 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 this is a message for you. You are a leader. This is a message for anyone who's a leader. Okay, this is a message for anybody who's a leader. Hey, what's up, Laura? What's going on? Um, leaders are the ones that are going to get this. And by leader, I want you to take on, if you're a parent, you're also a leader. You're a leader of your family if you're a parent. Hey, Anna, what's up? So we have people in Australia here. We have people in Vancouver. Um, just welcome. Just let me know where you're signing on from. Nicholas is in the interior of British Columbia. I'm curious to see where you're signing on from. I want you to engage here. Remember, the whole point of every transmission is to bring you into the moment from out of your mind, out of explanation, into sensation, into the moment. And so by engaging with me and getting involved and being on the court rather than on you know, the sidelines watching, just don't be on the sidelines watching. This isn't numbing yourself with Netflix. This is actually content that's going to bring you, you know, bring you into an awareness. Caroline is in uh, Nanaimo. What's going on? And Laura is in Toronto. It's like 11 p.m. there. It's not like you got to go to work in the morning. I'm sure you might have a virtual part of it, but um, it's good to have you. So it really means engagement. Uh, it, um, regulating your nervous system, we're going to talk about um, co-regulation and how important it is for engagement. So as I'm asking you specific questions, the tone of my voice, the tone of my nervous system, I'm showing you that I have an impact in regulating your nervous system. I'm asking you questions that's bringing you into the moment, that brings you engaged in a present time awareness, and when I'm present in my body and I'm completely certain with who I am and grounded with my vision. Now I'm grounded and I have this frame that I carry, this context that I carry with me, that wherever I go in my world and whoever's in my space gets to feel seen, gets to feel heard, gets to feel engaged with. And engagement activates our prefrontal cortex and it brings you into the present moment. This is why we must have community. This is why isolation is so dangerous for us. You know, I knew this coming in. I'm like, okay, fuck, I'm two weeks solitary confinement. It's now day nine and it's day nine of like being by myself. But two weeks prior to that, I was in, in um, Thailand. So I'm really feeling the lack of engagement. And the, the cool part about it is you won't haven't noticed you, how much you miss your family, right? God, I miss hugging my parents even, you know, just the sensation. Because what happens is when we touch one another, we're engaging our prefrontal cortex. Okay, we're getting into sensation. We're getting, we're actually allowing ourselves to co-regulate. We're tuning in each other's nervous systems with one another. So the question is, how do I use this information to my advantage? How do I take the fundamentals of neuroscience and be able to integrate it into my reality, into my way of being, so that I can create healthy relationships? Why is that important? Because all of the fractures that you've had in your primitive relationships up till now have been the root cause of most of your health problems, most of your anxiety issues, and they show up in your body. So if we can just go upstream and shift the neurobiology of we, you and your parents, you and your family members, you and your ex, because that we have this attachment, right? And when there's a fracture, there's a, there's a lack of integrity there. And so we walk around how many broken relationships have we carried with us thinking that, ah, uh, just going to let that one go, cut them out. And if you don't address it, you repeat it again and again. And that fractures the, the neurobiology of we, which affects the, the, the neurobiology of me. 
and it impacts my health and it's so important for me to look at. So where does it begin? It begins with this understanding. It begins with the awareness. It begins with the waking up to the fact that what I'm thinking and feeling is going out into the ether around me and it's impacting everyone and what I'm thinking and feeling didn't start with me. That's the key. This is the good news is that you don't, I don't have to play victim anymore to my parents because they're, what that was downloaded from them was downloaded from their parents. So if the way that we heal our relationships with our primitive caregivers, primary caregivers, is go back generations and heal that. And when you do, all of a sudden, now your family of origin story becomes stronger. And then what happens is your roots go deeper. This is the people who say, I don't know who I am. Of course you don't know who you, who, who you are. I've lost touch and connection with myself. Of course you have, because all of your roots have been pulled. You don't have them. You don't have any roots because you pulled them away because of wounding, because you don't understand where your family is coming from. And I'm not justifying bad behavior. I'm not justifying abusive behavior, saying they were wrong. I hear this from victims a lot, that they just want to make a case for the fact that their dad was an asshole. I believe you. I believe you that your father was very unconscious. And based on what I understand about his nervous system and understanding human behavior, he's behaving in a very predictable pattern completely predictable if we just understand how this all works and when we wake up all of a sudden we can tend to ourselves because deep down we're still walking around the earth hoping that a mom and dad would save us if it's not mom and dad and we can't do that then we find it in a relationship we date our mother or our father because that's incomplete we want mommy in the relationship and sometimes if that's not done properly and you don't do the healing work then you start to download that to the kids and then you, you do what they call emotional incest where the partner mom and dad didn't work partner didn't work well fuck i might as well try to take take the um emotional burden that I have on my own that I wish that mom would do, mom and dad would do, that, that I wish my partner would do, but he couldn't, well then now I'm gonna have to lean on my kids. Maybe my child can then become uh, my, my surrogate mother or father. It happens unconsciously and it all makes sense. And it's tragic, but that's how the family, and then the child grows up having to fix and nurture and care for and caretake and they don't feel seen and heard and they develop this identity based on fixing and they need someone to fix and they start attracting illnesses in their family dynamics. I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm just saying, ah, oh, boom, I get an, a sense of identity. Instead of really dealing with the real issue of what's not going on, I'm going to find a attract an event with a sick child or whatever to wake me up, from to, to distract me from that work and then now I can really pour my heart into being, you know, uh, being relevant and important here. I see this unconscious pattern going on all the time. And it's not to say that, you know, this is the cure, but do whatever medical interventions that you have to, but let's look at what's going on. Let's look at giving this whole system this eco, let's look at it as an ecosystem. Let's giving this whole ecosystem a chance to transform. And by doing that, you take the, take the ownership and go, oh, okay. <sighs> because I've now taken the time to heal myself. Now I can look around and go, oh my God, there's been kids in my space unconsciously downloading all of the things that I'm unconsciously doing. Whoa, what's going on? Okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to make, I'm going to learn how to make, help my kids, not make my kids, help my kids feel safe. How do you do that? By understanding your nervous system. So how do you do that? Here's what you do. Peter Levine, who was kind of like the developer of somatic work. Um, Hey, Suman, are you still with me? Are you still here, Suman? I want to see if you're there. Peter Levine, who was one of the uh, founders of, of somatic healing, uh, which is what I've been studying quite extensively as of late, and I bring the principles to you with the whole polyvagal theory with Stephen Porges as well, is um, he got into – Steve. Uh, 
Peter Levine teaches somatic healing. He gets into an accident where he an ambulance was taken. Okay, and he's a teacher on trauma. He helps people with trauma. And what happened was he was in a really bad accident, but he was fine and he was patched up and he was sitting there and one of the ambulance people or the doctors sat down next to him, touched him, touched his face, looked him in the eye and kind of soothed him and said, listen, you were in an accident. This is what just happened. Uh, a lot, you know, are you okay? I just want you to know that you're safe right now and you're absolutely safe. You survived. You were just fine. Are there any feelings or emotions? Do you want to talk about it? And they were there and present and held space for him to just express and get into sensation, get him into his body. And he said that I didn't get post-traumatic stress disorder because after the event, this triggering stressful event, there was somebody there to help co-regulate me and get me into my body and feel seen and feel heard. So how do you help your kids? How do you help make your kids feel safe in this? By understanding this, by here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to them and you're gonna hug them. You're gonna hold them and you're gonna feel the tension in their body or maybe just do some kind of like, hey, do you feel some tension there? Ooh, what's going on? In other words, get them in their bodies, look them in the eye, watch their facial expressions. You can tell if they're in dorsal vagal, they're depressed, shut down. You can tell if they're in rage. You can tell if they're in ventral vagal. Pay attention to them. This is a little secret of creating healthy relationships is to start looking at people like children. Start to observe and get to know the three different stages, the ventral vagal, the dorsal vagal, and the um, uh, sympathetic. And you'll be able to know where, there, you know, where, who's where. I mean, ever since I learned this stuff, and now this is my first real conscious relationship that I've ever had that's based on mutuality, I get on a call and I look at her face, I know exactly what's going on. Oh, she's in dorsal vagal, I know how to respond. In other words, I'm co-regulating her, I'm helping her. I'm, you, I, I, I'm helping her heal from her old wounds. And usually I'm triggering something in her, she'll bring it up and I can see she's upset. And what I'll do is I will try to mirror exactly how she's feeling instead of being, there's a difference here, what I want you to understand. There's a difference in regulating your kids and making them feel safe. You don't wanna do sympathy, you wanna do empathy. Sympathy is, ooh, that really sucks. I wouldn't want that happening to me, ooh. This is the energy and the physiology of sympathy is, ooh, I'm sorry, ooh. Versus empathy is, oh my gosh, it must be really difficult for you to not graduate your school. Like, what's that like for you? It must really suck. And if they're in dorsal vagal, if you can see them, see through them and empathize with them and mirror exactly what they're feeling better than, almost better than what they can themselves, you will, ha you will have them reduced to a puddle of tears. And that is when you know you've assisted in self -regula in regulating them. I know it sounds a little masochistic, but I try to make people cry all the time. Whenever I see my, uh, whenever I see Diana's face, and I know what that face looks like, you know your partner's face when they, all of a sudden, their nervous system goes into dysregulation. They they just start to get activated. You can see it in their face. I'm like, uh oh, okay. So I, kind of like push her into her feelings. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so this is what you're feeling and it must, wow. And then I'm literally getting into her world, which I didn't know how to do before when I didn't have access to these tools. I had no intuition. I didn't know how, I didn't know how to have empathy. And, th and those of you who know this, who have empathy, You'll have empathy, but in an unconscious way. You have empathy by, by losing yourself in a person rather than empathy in a way of holding myself first and then being able to get into her world and share exactly how she felt and listen. And then she's like, boom, she feels gotten and immediately her little girl comes out. She has tears. And then I start making fun of her. <laughs> and then she starts to laugh. And then if I can get her to laugh, boom done. My work is done. Her nervous system is now in a ventral vagal state and now her voice starts to change. She gets this shift in her voice. I pay really close attention based on her voice. I mean, based on based on the, the voice, I can just, she, she talks to me with a 
All of a sudden, I go into sympathetic. But she's like, hi, baby. But she goes, hi, baby. All of a sudden, I, I go into ventral vagal. So this is the neurobiology of we. This is wise for us to really learn. And why is it important for us to to learn this well because this is your brain okay let's say this is your brain and this is the hand model of the brain from uh, Dan Siegel okay this is the hand model of the brain okay this is the brain stem this is the limbic emotional center and this is the cognitive when you go in and this is ventral vagal this is like social engagement interaction when you go into a trigger all of a sudden this whole area shuts off and you're governed by this area. You can't think. You can't learn anything. If right now I'm teaching you and you're in dorsal vagal shutdown or you're in sympathetic, you're not learning. The only way you're going to learn is if I can bring you into a ventral vagal state. As a speaker, I might be doing a, a joke. I'll tell you a joke. Or sometimes I'll start my whole talks with a rap song. I'll go into a new audience and I'm like, all right, I start with a rap. And people are like, is this guy for real? Oh my God. And then I start dropping my pills, don't teach scales. And I do it with like, fuck you. Yeah, that's what. what? And then they're like, oh my God, this guy's fucking crazy. I love it. You know, he's got it like, I don't like rap. I think I don't like his flow, but I, he's got balls. I can't argue with them. And anybody who's got that, all right, I'm going to listen. Right, And so what I'm doing as a speaker is understanding the neuroscience of inf influence, persuasion. You have to actually have people feel comfortable because when they're first listening to you, everybody is scared. The neuroscience of it is they don't feel safe. It's like, okay, so what are you teaching me? You know, like, well, what, what are you trying to sell me? You know, this is basically it. And it's like, okay, well, obviously I'm trying to sell you on an idea. I'm trying to sell you on my vision, my vision of having my baby be born in a whole environment that people are actually tighter knit as a community rather, un, that rather than unraveled like the Great Depression. And the only thing between those two is our ability to regulate our nervous systems. So I'm doing this for him or her. You know, I'm doing this for all of us. I'm doing this for their generation and I'm doing this for past generations and I'm doing this for myself because a world where I feel connected and engaged is a much more incredible, incredibly uh, fun experience. I'm only on that planet for maybe, you know, 40 more years, 50 more years. I might as well have some agency in creating my world in a way that I really enjoy. So to create a global community of people dedicated to self-healing so that my kids my, my, my family, my child can grow in an environment where they feel safe and they feel self-confidence and they don't have to deal with all of the same mental stuff and anxiety and that's my vision and I just want to take people who are committed to the process with me, you know? <laughs> How is it that you've basically hit the nail on the head with so many of my challenges? Because you're not alone, Laura. <laughs> because you're not alone, Laura. <laughs> Kelly, I love you, Kelly. Kelly, I told you I wanted you on this call today. This is, it means stop it, you had me crying today. <laughs> this is very, very, very important to me. This is, this is coming from my heart. I hope that you can feel it, right? This is something that if we don't take this work on, if we don't take this on, then it's like the human race. And, and it's all coming, it's like coming into our faces right now. Everything that's bullshit in the world is falling apart. Everything. What do we use to distract ourselves? We use sports. Can't go to a game. Uh, strip club. Oh, can't go see the strippers. Oh, geez. Can't hire a prostitute right now. I can't do everything that the society, gambling, I can't do all of the things that I do to distract myself from sitting here in that emptiness and the like the universe is basically going hey Nima go to your room go to your room and, like, and then you can see this is what's happening the collective we're now being sent into a timeout the collective is all in a timeout right now and you can see the conspiracy theorists they're like fuck you mom and dad I'm gonna do what I want right and then there's the the obedient people. Okay, whatever you say, mommy and daddy. I'm sitting here waiting for the system to save me. Please save me, mommy and daddy. I just watched the whole thing from overview, and I'm like, uh, 
nobody's stopping me from living my vision. There's no conspiracy. No, no group out there, no uh, institution has the power to stop me from this vision. If they tell me that I can't do chiropractic adjustment, well, I'm just going to adapt and be a healer in another way. And I want to teach chiropractors how to do the same. Is that, okay, so they're saying you can't go to the office. Okay, they shut you down, whatever. You don't have enough money. Well, you don't have enough money in reserves to keep you. This is what's happening to many of my colleagues. And I'm, we're hearing it in all of the rooms. Okay, you don't have that. That's fine. Well, then you have other abilities. You can grow. You can learn how to take your... You can adapt. This is entrepreneurship, man. You got to pivot. You pivot and serve, show up, but you can't do that if you're not feeling safe. Why? Because your parents didn't know how to help you feel safe and they didn't teach you these tools and I'm teaching you because I want you to break that cycle. And so what you're going to do tonight is you're going to go do like a 30 second hug with your child and just hug them and just see them and feel the tension in their spine. Like, I mean, I can't help it. It's weird. I, when I do inner child work, this is embarrassing. When I do inner child work, I hold my two-year-old Nima and then I do a chiropractic adjustment on him. <laughs> That's like, I can't, you know, so when I'm even, I, I'll hold like a little baby. I can't help but palpate their chiropractors. You know what I'm talking about. If you're, if you're a chiropractor, you know, let me know if you know what I'm talking about. I'm palpating everyone. So hold your children, palpate the, the muscles, just feel the tension, just notice and get used to this noticing. Start to massage them. Make sure you're touching them. Lay down, hey, do you want to rub? Do you want a back rub? I really want to help you. Like, do you, do you feel like a little back rub right now? Do you, come here, let's do a little back rub right now. I just want you to, ah, now can you breathe with me? Can you just breathe? Ah, and then teach them all of this stuff. Just be able to look in their eyes and by the way on our event this weekend i'm going to be teaching you exactly how to do that how to regulate yourself so that you can actually help prevent your kids from getting ptsd over this whole thing because you have agency you have a say right now if you get how this is working and what's going on you can actually step up and then when you see them and just be able to pinpoint their energy, you're a mom, you're a dad, you know, you know your kid, to be able to go, oh, honey, come here, let me see you, I got you. Yeah, tell me what went on and really not bring your shit into them. Not, oh, you're triggered, you're anxious, oh, get, just don't think of, like this is, and I'm not blaming my mom, the, the, way, that, the way that I was raised, if I'm having big feelings, it's like, don't, just fix it. Doctor, fix it. He's having anxiety. Like I would have this, this is a very common thing. I'll have moms come to me. This is a very common thing. And if you're a mom right now, prepare to be triggered. I'm just telling you the truth right now. Patients would come to me and go, my kid, my kid's having anxiety. Can you help them? And, and then I'm like, does your kid want to work on it with me? And they're like, no. I'm like, then your kid doesn't want to be fixed. You are triggered by the fact that you don't have, and I couldn't say this when I was in my practice, I couldn't say this when I was in my practice because, you know, govern, govern, regulatory bodies, but now with my clients, they hire me because I'm like, no bullshit. I'm like, dude, you're not able to handle your own anxiety. And because you have a guilt about that, because you are unable to regulate that, you're not able to help yourself through it when you get triggered and you don't know the tools of how to help yourself. When you see your kids get triggered, it brings up the feeling within you that you're a bad mom and you'd rather just make it go away while the kid is still feeling not seen. The kid doesn't want to be fixed. The kid just wants to be seen. The kid just wants to be understood. The kid doesn't want to be labeled as a problem. The kid, wants, the kid wants you to see that what they feel makes sense. And if you don't valid, if you don't learn how to validate you, you won't learn how to validate them, 
which then f they feel invalidated and they walk around not trusting themselves because they have feelings inside, but then if they're told that they're incorrect or disordered, now it's like, oh, I, I'm, I'm disordered. So I'm inherently growing up not trusting in myself. Welcome to the cause of every fucking toxic relationship we've ever had. And the cycle just keeps going. And that mother can just go, look, I know how to help you because I've taken the time to learn how to help me. And now that I can see me, I can now mirror exactly what that child is going through because I've taken care of the little child inside of me. And this work is never done, Kelly. You can't just stop. Yeah. Giving them body. Exactly, Caroline. This is exactly what you're doing. The content I'm giving you each time is to leave here with something firm that's going to help bring your family closer together. That's going to help cause a, from unraveling to getting closer together. You know, and this is moment to moment work. It's checking in, self assessing constantly. Does that sound narcissistic to you? No, it's actually the opposite. It's the very opposite. It is completely um, uh, self-affirming first so that you can resource yourself and not be so needy to distract yourself by trying to get it outside of you inauthentically. You then are actually showing up. And what's so cool is the people in my tribe, like Laura, for example, who's a midwife and on our group call, got her a chance to gave her a chance to just say, "Hey, you know, Laura, what's?" I said, "Does anyone want to? I want to hear from you. What's so?" She puts up her hand and she's like, "I'm a midwife, and we feel totally abandoned by the system. We don't have enough supplies, and people are. It's dangerous. It's you know, it's like we're we're on the front lines. We don't have enough support, and they're treating us like garbage and." boom, her big abandonment stuff is coming up through this, right? Just like in your case, it's abandonment stuff coming up for her. And at the same time, there's a relationship crisis at the same time she's going through. She's sharing this with us and we're giving her a chance and a space to, to feel it. She goes, nobody's seeing me, right? And as she says it, we were all able to see her and what she was going through. And we kind of gave her this group kind of beam of love and she kind of took it in and it was so great to see her release into her tears and really accept it. And, um, and her homework then was for everybody was to step up and now lead something and now lead kind of something. And so what she did, I got a text message from her today. She goes, I just started a regular weekly group call from a local midwives kind of group where we all are just getting together and just meeting on a regular basis and connecting. That's how you're going to get through this without PTSD is through connection is through connecting with self is taking this time to just connect. Yeah. But my fi find it, that doesn't matter. Stop connect with you. And I promise, the opportunity to serve another will take care of itself. I promise. That's just the way it goes. And the big lesson in tonight is to go and grab your children tonight and just hold on to them for more than a, like a minute and just smell them, you know, and let them, you know, really get into your energy field. You know, all of the senses, smell, touch, you know, just if they want to cry, let them cry right there and just say, I know, like, like tears are so important right now. Sometimes I, I feel like I remember um, I was really stuck. I, I saw a Facebook post like a hater and that shit really because I'm like my heart is in serving, right? So I get vulnerable. I open my heart. And then when somebody comes and attacks it and there are people, some, some really horrific people out there, wounded individuals, uh, just spitting their anger just with a post that you do. It's like, bullshit, that's not true. I work in so, it's like, they're really hurtful, right? And I was flying to Barcelona to um, for an event and I just felt anxiety and I'm like, oh fuck, I'm in sympathetic and I really need to just get this emotion out. So I go on um, on the flight and I pick a movie that I know is going to help me access my tears. Okay. 
um, that's going to really help me access my tiers. And so I picked Rocket Man which I highly recommend you do. If you can go and watch the movie Rocket Man, have you seen it? If you've seen it, it was amazing. Okay? Yeah. So you watch watching Rocket Man, and so I watched it, and especially at the end when Elton John reconnected with his inner child. I'm just like, oh, this is what I teach. She's doing it. Oh, I see. And then as soon as the tears started to flow, I let myself go into the grief of the feelings of rejection, and I kind of let it out. And then immediately after it was done, all of a sudden, literally, I'm like, oh, I'm in ventral vagal now. I literally feel different. And now all of the things that I'm seeing, because when you're in dorsal vagal or you're in sympathetic, you have these goggles on, and everything you look at from your partner to your kids to your job to your ass – to your love handles, to your hair, it all looks like shit and you hate life and you just want to die, right? But then if you shift your nervous system, all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I have these new glasses on and now like the, the dust is, and I can see and the world seems so different. These are our goggles. This is the goggles that I put on are designed to freaking shift whatever I see. It's pretty badass when you really understand the mechanisms of it. So Saturday, what's going to happen for you that are, that are going to be joining in, we're going to take you on your own hero's journey. And I've already asked you guys, those of you who have um, signed up already, let me see, have I, yes, here it is. I just left, a, I just left the uh, link in the comment section right there. Uh, we have a few spots left. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to share with me your your origin story, okay, and where you are at. And I'm going to take you through your hero's journey. I'm your guide. So, so your overview experience, five-hour session, I'm your guide taking you through your hero's journey. And we're going to go to those events that have you feeling, that have you, like, attributing the breakdown that this whole coronavirus – is exposing. We're going to go to the origin and then I'm going to show you some tools to access that younger self and clear and change the story, not just here, but here. So you have a customized kind of meditation flow that's according to your own wounding that you can use again and again and again to start to change the nervous system patterns and it's work. It's not over going to be done after five hours. You're just going to get started after five hours on your new hero's journey. And we're going to game plan your next 90 days. While everybody's sitting here, this is, this is the brilliance of it. I got off my group coaching call as well. I've invested in a coach. And um, the coolest thing, we sat down while everybody is sitting here on lockdown going, oh, no, we just got to sit there and wait. We don't know what the next 90 days are going to be. What we've done is this badass group of entrepreneurs. We basically are like, oh, okay. Instead of waiting for the universe to tell us or the government to tell us how our next 90 days are going to be or some virus playing victim to a virus, we're actually game planning what, who we're going to be, what we're going to do, what we would love to have, what impact we'd love to make, how we're going to pivot our businesses, how we're going to pivot our offers, because I have a live event model. It's like, uh, okay, my business is based on live events. I got to adapt. What am I going to do? Oh, I got a plan to help people in this new kind of reality. And this is what you're supposed to do if you want to emerge as the leader. Instead of retreating, you are to advance. That's the difference. This is what I'm going to tell you. But you can't advance if you're in dorsal vagal shutdown, playing dead, dissociating from your body, not looking at the truth, not looking at reality because it's too painful, which I understand because I don't like looking at myself a lot. So today I actually did, and I felt the resistance in my body that it took to actually look at the reality and what I would love to create. It was tough. It's kind of like when you're trying to avoid looking at your taxes. It's tough, isn't it? 
But then when it's difficult, you got to make space for the resistance that it's going to be there, number one. And number two, if you just have your eyes on the prize of the why. Remind me again why you're doing this. Remind me again, can you write the names, the specific names of the people that you're doing this for? I don't want to say my family, I want to see the names. And there's a reason I want you to engage because when you write it down, you connect to that why here, all of a sudden it gives you that boost, that little push that we all need when we have a guide on the side because you're the hero, not this guy. That's the big distinction of my career that I've made um, now versus maybe five years ago is that five years ago I positioned myself as your hero, which was fucking exhausting because when I do that, then I get to, then if I don't do the job as you thought I did, then I became the villain or perpetrator. And I was like, oh, fuck that. All right, so here's the deal. I'm the guide on, on your journey, okay? And I've been there as well. And I know, I know all of your bullshit stories along the path because I have them all. And I'm a good bullshitter too. So you can't bullshit me. I call you right out. Do I have your permission? Because the goal is up there. Remember the mountaintop where the kids come out there going, it was a tough time, but we got closer together. And I'm really glad. I loved how my parents showed up. I'm so proud of them. Mm, what's in the way of that? All of your stories and ego, all of all of the stories, all of the your your little child inside of you that doesn't want to grow up. That's a, that's the only thing in the way. So the question is, why are you doing this, and is it worth it? Who are you doing this for? For Isla and Houston, Julie, absolutely, one hundred percent. So here's my next question: Do we have to explain that in front of other people? Uh, explain what? I'm not sure which one. Hey, Alana, what's up, girl? Hmm. So it was amazing. Oh, it was amazing. Great, great, great. Couldn't agree more. Has been giving me a lot to work on. Great. So yes, Julie, any questions that you have? So here's my question. For those of you that are coming, I've always a I've asked this before. We have a few spots left. I have the, the link in the comment section. The question I'm asking you is, what would you love to take away on, on Saturday after the five-hour intensive virtual retreat that we finish? What would you love to take away that would have you being like, wow, that was 10x of the time and resources that I invested? Because we can make that happen as long as we're clear on what it is. How are you taking this nerve? Like what's in the way right now? What's stopping you right now? And are you ready to just freaking go all in and solve this? And word to the wise, Saturday will be the beginning of your training. And what would you love to create over the next three months for yourself, learning how to regulate yourself so that what? What does that look like? What does that vision look like? If you've been participating with these calls since the, since the beginning, I'm always bringing you back to the vision, always bringing you back to that vision of where you are on the planet, what you're here to do. Explain your personal story. You don't have to do it no, you don't have to, Caroline, but I know you, you're going to want to because your story will heal other people's. You'll be surprised. That's what everybody says. We're going to have to explain to other people. No, you don't have to. You're going to be inspired to. When you see people sharing and you're like, oh, part of your healing, your nervous system will be to expose some shame. <laughs> if you're not forced to do it, you'll, you'll be encouraged because it's going to happen. Imagine. Imagine what that holding on to shame does to your nervous system. Imagine what all of those lies are doing to your nervous system. What happens to me is interesting. If I have something that I'm hiding in the background from you or anyone, there's a weird tension that happens in my physiology. Have you noticed that? In your physiology, when you're hiding or withholding something from somebody, your body is tense all the time. That's why I always say, I've always said anxiety is a distraction from a lie. So there's this pretending or this withholding that's happening back here and my body goes into a physiology that's tense. But the more that I share transparently all of this shit in the background, ironically, the more my body starts to unravel its tension. 
And when I discovered that, I'm like, wow, this is not something that people get in a chiropractic office, but they need. So what adjustment can solve an issue caused by you holding on to so much shame that you're like this? I can adjust you, but then you're going back to that shame story. So that shame, in order for you to heal, the story around your shame needs to be transformed. And there's nothing that you've done that hasn't been done a billion times. Sexual relationships with family members, seen it. It's been done all throughout history. It's happening as we speak. And your story around it, your incomplete story around it, your self-judgment around it, as you're listening to me talking about it, you're watching symptoms come up. I don't even know you, but if it's happening, I already know what's going on in your body. You're like, Ugh. you're feeling called out. You want to run. You want to say, fuck you, Nima. I get it all the time that trigger that's coming up is trying to call you into telling the truth that tension that's holding on to that you're holding on to in the body because of it it's it's begging to come out to heal that's what healing is and be witnessed and be seen now we're not going to sit around and do that that's not part of it but every single weekend workshop that i've ever done shit has come out on our last one in um in Sydney, there was one woman who has been hiding an affair for five years. And then this other guy across, he was like, just called it out. He goes, I'm a piece of shit. I've been doing that for years, right? And then when he shared that, all of a sudden, she gets up and says, I have too. And then two others were like, I have too. And you could see this collective like, Oh, and they all were like, oh my God, you, you get it. And literally I could see their physiology as they shared it. It was like, whoa. And I'm like, this is fucking magic. I'm like, I can't like, I'm like never in my wildest dreams did I anticipate that I would be the maestro facilitating this kind of fucking magic. And it's nothing short of magic. If you've been to the overview experience, write down the comment section. We've done about 30 over the past five years. Each time, I don't know what it is, but you keep refining it, it keeps getting better. Now I'm bringing it virtual. What people pay thousands of dollars and they travel all from all over the world and flights and hotels, you're getting out of the comfort of your home the same experience for only 350 bucks. For 20 people plus my clients, who are already committed to this work and are like chomping at the bit. They're like, we're excited. When is it? When is it? It's like, I can't believe how many people are nerding out on neuroscience these days because you heal your relationships. You start becoming more powerful. You start feeling comfortable in your body. It's, it's magical. There's nothing better than this. Ah, I'm putting my 10 year old daughter to sleep as I listen this late night. She's awake with a great source of anxiety for both of us. Very intense for me trying to apply this good work. Laura, you're just holding her and you're just saying, and you're saying, you know what? It's okay for you to be scared. This is what you're going to do, Laura. It's totally okay for you to be scared. It's totally okay for you to be scared. It makes sense that you're so scared. Look at what you've gone through over the last few years with with your watching your mom and dad and seeing how much I've been struggling and working so hard what's that been like for you do you want to do you want to tell me what that's been like and you not taking offense to it but just being a witness to a little girl who you know has had to deal and cope with some with a mother who's really had a rough go and God love you for what you've gone through, Laura. I know you personally. And, um, oh, the story of you jumping in and, you know, getting started in this is amazing. And, you know, holding yourself in the highest regard of what you've gone through, can you see how challenging it would be for a daughter to go through? This is a great opportunity for you to just kind of like hold her and say, it's okay for you to be scared and it's okay for you to cry. And... And it would totally make sense that you feel this way. Our nervous systems want to constantly make sense of things. If we deny or invalidate feelings, and it confuses us. If I have my feelings denied or invalidated, now I'm confused. Because my body's saying one thing and you're telling me it's inappropriate. Who do I trust? 
right? It's confusing for the nervous system. And it's not your fault because you didn't know, you didn't understand these, the neuroscience behind it, but this is why we must learn because there's nothing wrong with you, Laura. You didn't do anything wrong. There's everything you completely make sense. Your daughter completely makes sense. It's all predictable. Your ex-husband completely makes sense. It's all predictable if we just understand the family of origin stories. It's pretty much clockwork predictable pattern. That's why when I'm talking, you're like, how is it that you know what the hell? Because you're a fucking template. Your story is a... <laughs> It's pretty much a template. Your story is like fill in the blanks of the name. It's predictable. All of your stories are. All of your shames are. All of your, like it just, I just want you to know that you make sense. So does your ex. So does your crazy ass ex partner. So do your kids with attention deficit and health issues. They all make sense too. The question is, are you ready to do something about it and take it on? And if you want to, you can start tonight by really holding them. And here's the thing that Diana and I do when I have a chance to see each, when we have a chance to see each other. What I'm going to encourage you to do with your sweetheart to start to create a secure attached relationship where both of you feel safe with one another is this is one of my favorite parts that I love that Diana and I are all on the same kind of page. I walk into the house. I walk into the apartment after work, after I haven't seen her all day. The first thing that I do, I put my stuff down. I look at her, look her in the eye, and I hold her. And we take a few breaths together, holding each other and just feeling each other. And then I take the time and I smell her because she smells really good. And I think she likes the way I smell. Correct me if I'm wrong, Diana. I mean, I'm sure you don't mind. I'm not so bad. And then we both feel we get into each other. We get into sensation and I kind of touch her back and I kind of massage it a little bit. And then I literally can feel both of our bodies sinking together and we attune to one another and boom, that's how we start the, the evening interaction. Instead of being in your head, it's like, Get into your body, get into your breath, coordinate and mirror your breath with one another, like in the same breathing. <sighs> you start to attune to one another's emotions. You feel, and then, okay. And then I love to hear, so tell me about your day. So I'm listening to all of the emotions that have come up. I'm empathizing. This is conscious relationships. This is what I'm kind of, I'm first I'm mastering it myself so that I can honestly say, all right, this is what we got. Yeah, we really have this ability to have an amazing conscious relationship. Yeah, I feel confident teaching it. Two years ago, I wouldn't feel confident teaching it because it's not something I can't, I can't lead you where I haven't been, right? So I'm there now and I'm like, oh, this is really working. Oh, this happened and try this, work it out. Like I'm a, my life is my message. My, I'm a human experiment of, of healing. I'm a human healing experiment every, and I'm hungry, thirsty, and curious to know. Uh, this curiosity is so massive within me, which is what I'm trying to encourage in you in case you haven't noticed. I'm trying to instill and cater to your curiosity because if you can stay curious, the part of you that's curious is your prefrontal cortex. If I just keep following my curiosity, like Toucan Sam, follow my nose, I, I don't know if it's the right person to Cam Sam, follow my nose, follow my curiosity. If I can keep following my curiosity, I'm activating my prefrontal cortex and I keep learning and integrating it. And then when I learn and integrate it, I look around at my life. I'm like, yes, it's actually working. My life is actually a demonstration of this work. Okay, great. I want to teach you this level. It's like coming through the hero's journey. You then come back to home into the village teaching your new, uh, you know, discoveries. You come back with the lessons and that's what you're going to do on your hero's journey. I'm just kind of walking with you as your guide on it. You're the hero. So that's what's available. Debbie, perfect timing. After, this happens after I take his phone away. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. You're, it's true. <laughs> Faith, <laughs> yeah, it's true, as I do. <coughs> I'm too busy answering all your fucking texts, Kelly. 
<laughs> anyway, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so yes, after she takes my phone away from the people that are asking me questions and I have to answer because that's my fault. It's totally my fault. It's nobody's, nobody's fault. Um, I have to go in and solve it. You know, that's what I'm working on. Um, then we sit there and we do a co-regulating hug. <sighs> but now the cool part about being in quarantine is I get to practice it with myself. Does this make sense? So let's practice it with ourselves right now. Or if you have your loved one you're watching with them, which I highly recommend, you just give yourself a big hug and let's do three breaths while you get into sensation. <sighs> Watch your face, your body, completely relax and acknowledge that you're safe in this moment. I want you to scroll down in some content and watch the interview I just did with my good friend, Dr. Russell Kennedy. And uh, you're going to get a lot out of that conversation too. He's one of my best friends and he lear I learned everything from him. Um, but if you have any questions about the event, send me a DM, but just jump in. Just don't ask. Jump in, commit to the process, co-regulate with us, and turn this PTSD potential time. If you catch it in time and you do things right, your kids can you can save them from post-traumatic stress because we're all going to have it. Everyone's going to have a version of it. We all have a degree of it. The question is, you have agency over how deep it goes. And based on your regulation, the kids will be different as well. So that makes it 10 times more important for me to take care of my mental health and stay within my uh, spiritual practices of meditation, uh, exercise, journaling. It's, it's 10 times more important now. Are there any questions? Was this useful? Yes. If your partner through the ha though has trauma the last few years from medical procedures and childhood ones too, it seems that that affection can be triggering. Exactly. Yeah, it could. It possibly could. So it's going to take communication. You know, you put your hand on them and they jump and it's like, okay, I get it, you know. And that must be very difficult because um, you can't force somebody to do their work or face it. And I hear this a lot. Well, my husband won't do and deal with that stuff. And I know how triggering and how challenging that can be. And either you have two choices, either leave and try, you know, or take this on as a spiritual practice and see what what that's bringing up for you if you feel rejection from that or what that, you know, whatever that's coming up from you, Maureen, your job is to kind of work and overview that for yourself, you know. Are there any questions? Has this been useful tonight? Debbie, were you, did you see the whole thing? Perfect timing. I do hope that um, for those of you that are coming, like I, I keep saying this, like I can't wait to guide you on Saturday. And you're going to get very crystal clear on what you want to create over the next few months. This is what, what's happening. Those of you who've jumped in already, the wheels are already spinning. So it's activating your nervous system into possibility. You jump in now, your now nervous system is now in possibility, whereas before it's like, I hope things change. Now you're actually taking on, you're driving the bus. You're saying, I'm going to take this on. I'm going to do this. And now what happens is your brain starts to look for evidence to help you get to that place, to gather evidence, to ask for the right help. Now you're teaching your brain what to look for. So I'm going to encourage you to do that over the next few months. And on Saturday, I'm going to teach you how to remove all of that story in the body and the mind of what's in the way because of the whole intergenerational thing. And we're just getting started after that. Are there any questions? All right. Well, super grateful. And you have your practice for tonight. Uh, those of you that just, if you just jumped on right now, I really recommend you go back and watch it. It was a pretty interesting uh, thing that came through um, and very relevant if you want to stop the process of really passing on with the kids is to really get them into their bodies and get them feel seen, get them feel, get them, help them get, feel heard and understood and for you to regulate your own emotions when they come up as they have emotions come up.
and they're crying and you want to fix it rather than just seeing being there and just or they say I don't want to talk about it and say fix it instead you go ooh okay I totally get it you know I know I know it's uncomfortable go there I totally understand it must be really difficult just know that I'm I'm here you can so constantly validating what what seeing why how they're responding makes sense and joining them if you want to you want to lead someone you got to join them first that's it this is what i've learned anyway has this been uh, maureen hi maureen debbie when this whole thing was going down you were traveling i was thinking of this big message to the world like this is what you've been working towards helping the world debbie my thoughts exactly you know debbie's debbie came to my First overview experience, one of my first overview experiences in Toronto, Debbie was there and we, I remember that moment as well when you were a young girl and we took you through that process and, uh, uh, and, and you were in kind of like a shutdown mode after that and you were feeling stuck in your, um, in your business relationship and so we were working through all of that and I'm so grateful to have guided you after you've come to an event like that and we've worked with you, Debbie, you kind of, you end up like family, don't you? Because when I worked with you, I've seen your five-year-old self. So I know you and I absolutely love you. It's like this kindred kindred spirit type of thing that I have with all my clients because I've seen the real them within the first hour of meeting them. I, I now have seen your seven-year-old puddle in, in a, in a puddle of tears how do I not love the shit out of you <laughs> I see I see the innocence of all of us and it's such a gift it was life-changing and so yeah Debbie I um, it would be really cool if you would join us and see how much see what else comes up this weekend on Saturday there's a link in the comments so if you have any questions about it feel free to ask I'll be back with my regular free content and I'm really looking uh, for the people that are taking this free content and they're in integrating it and they're like holy shit how, how many of you notice it's kind of magical and how many of you are more curious are starting to follow the white rabbit of your curiosity those are the ones I really look forward to serving and talking to so thank you so much again I want to say thank you for being here for your attention because you give me an opportunity to share what's what makes my heart sing and hopefully you can feel it coming from me and um, if you have any questions let me know how I can serve you because a question that you ask could turn into content that's really how it happens I don't plan these they come through with whatever is relevant to serve people at that time and tonight I felt called to teach you how to stop the process of PTSD from fucking bulldozing through your whole family and it can be done if you understand and master the polyvagal theory in your body and your mind. I love you. Thank you.